So in our final video and flowchart on looking at climate uh, that we see in biomes, we're going to be looking at the microclimate side of the story, and we're also going to be looking at a very important topic today um, of global climate change. So we'll entitle this next flowchart Climate 3. And here we're actually going to finally define the idea of a biome in just a bit. So first and foremost, we've covered macroclimate over the past two videos, and now we want to add some detail to what microclimate is all about. So we know that micro is referring to small-scale climate, but more specifically, what we can understand by the idea of microclimate is that this would include features within local climate, so that's a good term here, local climate, as opposed to that broad climate that we observed in macro. Features within local climate can influence climate conditions and influence climate conditions. And what features are we specifically even talking about here, this idea of features? The best way to understand microclimate is to think of a very simple rudimentary example like this. Imagine you have, in this example, a, a large tree or a large rock or a large log of some sort. This is actually going to affect the microclimate of the small region that's underneath, let's say, this tree, rock, or log. Because what's, go what's going to happen is this large tree will provide shade. And if it provides shade, what is it stopping from entering? That solar radiation, that's sh uh, that solar energy that we talked about. So if we have this providing of shade, we can also, with this, would definitely entie uh, the idea of blocking wind all of this is going to be influential in the micro local climate of this uh, area that's simply underneath this tree rock or log. So it's a very simple idea, but it does have a strong influence, this feature that we see in this local localized area and the communities within it. In addition, in climate three, we're also going to be looking at the idea of global climate change. And this is something of great interest to us because it's quite relevant and it's also important in terms of ecological understanding of biology. When we think of global climate change, we have to understand we're looking at a global change, meaning that we're referring to a large scale change. This is not just looking at one region. This is not just looking at an isolated microclimate, let's say. It's a large-scale change that entirely will be affecting or is affects the biosphere. Everything that's living and non-living on the Earth. The biosphere is a fancy way of just saying Earth, the life of the sphere that we live on. So this large-scale change will be mainly due to the following. And this is something we've already probably understood through previous courses, but it's good to reiterate. This is usually due to an increased concentration of two main things. It's an increased concentration of the biosphere of CO2, carbon dioxide, and also other greenhouse gases. Now, these are naturally occurring gases, uh, but what happens is that if there is too much, if we have an increased concentration, more than normal, of these greenhouse gases and CO2, then we usually have problems in terms of the climate change that we observe, the large-scale change that is. This is usually due in part to the burning of fossil fuels, when we burn fossil fuels continuously and constantly, we get this increase of CO2 and greenhouse gases. And it's also due to deforestation. And that should make sense because of our understanding of photosynthesis. What do plants or forests, let's say, full of plants, if we deforest them, we're taking out all of these individuals, all of these organisms that want the CO2 that's all over the atmosphere, all over the air, that this byproduct that we have, but they can't get it because we're killing all of them. So thus, we don't have any CO2 absorbing mechanisms, and thus we increase the concentration. So it's a powerful idea that photosynthesis shows up itself shows up one more time in this idea of ecology and finally in terms of global climate change we have to understand whether or not 
does this have any effect or are there effects on the future climate? That's a question we ask as an ecologist. What are the effects on the future climate based off of the global climate change that we have established? Well, as an ecologist or somebody studying climate change, you have to look for evidence, of course. That's a big idea. We have to look for evidence of changes in the fossil record. Now, the idea of the fossil record has been mentioned before in Bio 1, and it's a big, very strong component of evidence because it's concrete evidence. It's very direct, clear evidence. In addition, ecologists try to make predictions based off of the information that they can achieve through this fossil record, or at least try to find through this fossil record. So we'll say ecologists make predictions. And then there's one simple example that I want to go over, the idea of North America and Eurasia. So we'll do an example here, EX for example of North America and also Eurasia. So what does this mean? What is this example about? Well, what previously the fossil record states is that North America and the uh, region of Europe and Asia combined a long time ago was covered in glaciers. Covered in, this is all through the f fossil record, so it's strong evidence. Covered in glaciers, um, and that was until about 16,000 years ago. So we have this information, and what are we going to do with this? We're going to extrapolate that because it used to be covered 16,000 years ago in many, many glaciers. We know that that must mean that the climate definitely warmed for some whatever reason. And because the climate warmed, the glaciers, they retreated. Where would they retreat? They would retreat to colder regions like the poles that we see today. The glaciers retreated, and then we have an increased, let's say, distribution of plants all throughout North America and Eurasia. You can write that right down right over here as increased, don't have much room here, uh, distribution. And distribution of what? That's specifically of trees and plants because the glaciers move away, and then we have opportunity for other things to take their place. So that's a uh, hardcore evidence that climate change can happen, has happened, and we now utilize this type of evidence to see if it is happening right now. Last point on climate uh, in this lecture that we're looking at on biomes, we'll finally recognize the idea of a biome and define it more specifically. The major role that climate plays is in determining is in determining the nature and location of biomes. The nature plus location of biomes. And so remember how I said climate is the most important factor in the distribution of organisms? This is saying that in just a different terminology, more of an ecological terminology, especially through this use of biomes and nature and location. So we can finally define a biome as the following and we'll close our understanding of climate based off of this. Biomes are major life zones. Thus the root word of bio there. Major life zones characterized by usually two types of things. Characterized by either vegetation types, which would just mean plant life, let's say, vegetation type and that's in what we would call a terrestrial biome in a terrestrial biomes and then on the other side of this and the other half of this lecture is devoted to the other type of biome that's not terrestrial but it's actually the physical environment is what's going to play a big role physical environment in the aquatic biomes, which we'll study in future flowcharts for this lecture. So that's our definition of a biome. Major life zones characterized by vegetation type in terrestrial biomes and physical environment in aquatic biomes, both of which we'll look at in the next couple of flowcharts.